it's not I think it's just the app but honestly it's fine like I you know like it's kind of like a difficulty that I can I can see through it like it's trying to make me like anxious and like you know like I don't really it's not that big of a deal I can just send the pictures but thank you so much for trying to help Andy Okay, so okay at least start. for this one we can yeah. um, at least we know for next time so for the next one i could help you with the settings a little bit we could go through but yeah for now you can just go through your thing. we're excited okay cool let me send you guys the pdf um so you can go through the powerpoint yourself while i'm talking um okay give me a moment send it to the chat If you want, I could share it when you um, send it to me, or when I get it, oh. I can share my screen a little bit. Okay, I, you want me to do that? Maybe that'd be easier, actually. Okay. I have the. Should I send you like a PDF of it? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, sent it. Oh my god. Okay, I just got it now. I hope it works because it's saying it's not working. Let me try sending it through PowerPoint. How are you guys doing today? Friday, last day of the week. And the full moon is on Monday, guys. So go out on the moon, relax. Oh, shoot. Do something. Yeah. And you know, it's, um, I realized it's on a Monday. So meaning it's like, gonna be really powerful for the day of the moon. Okay. Um okay let me there see we go. If I can look in this way. Let's see if I can Okay yeah it's making me download um Adobe but Yeah it's so annoying. Um you know what? I'm just gonna send pictures. It's fine guys. All right, so I'm going to send some pictures. I'll start now. So we're going to talk about the history and the magic of the phase. So I'm going to send some pictures as I'm talking, just so you guys can see and kind of be on the same level I'm on. Okay. So I want to begin by explaining what the phase are, but I just want to give a little, just a little information on who they are. Um, because today most people think fairies are like cute and cuddly, lovable little creatures, but that's not the case. And fairies, they embody good and evil. They embody both sides and both energies. And some of the fae, they could be really friendly and helpful to you, but don't assume that all fae want to work with you. Some may be kind, some may be rude, and some really don't care about humans. Some are uninter uninterested in humans. And you really can't like command the fae to cooperate with you. Like everyone must understand that not all fae will like you, not all fae will be friendly, um, but you shouldn't be offended because every one of them is unique in their own way. So the fae are essentially spiritual entities who have their own lives and do not exist only for you to interact with them. So do remember that information if you choose to interact with the fae and make sure to respect them regardless of dark or light. Okay, so I'm gonna send some of the pictures now that I've given like, kind of like a brief information on what they are. I haven't really gone in depth, but I am going to go more in depth on that. And I'm going to talk about how you can work with them and how they can really benefit your spiritual life. Because I don't think a lot of people understand how much faith can help your spiritual life. So I do wanna get into that a lot in this class. Um, are you a face heat? Yes, I am. So I've, I had a past life as a fae, and I think honestly many times, but I did transform and, you know, have more human lifetimes because my soul is, is a soul that likes to explore and do difficult things. That's, that's what I see us as. But so we just have to kind of go out of, of our comfort zone to incarnate as a human after being a fae. But I will say they are so connected to nature essentially i see them as almost like angels of nature angels of earth is what i see them as earth angels because they protect the earth okay so 
give me a second, guys. And I'm going to send a picture, just a few pictures so you guys can see what a true description of a fae is. Um, there we go. Okay, so that's essentially what a fae looks like. Not like the ones we do have, the ones we saw growing up, like Tinkerbell. Those faves, I'm going to talk more about them and I'm going to send pictures because I'm talking about it. Um, you. Yes, so faves are also mystical creatures. They're really mythical and a lot of cultures actually talk about the faves and they all have different names that they call them. But I'm going to go into depth on, you know, the truth as to what they are. And I'm going to talk more about what they do now being in the astral realm because in the past they did used to live in the 3d so they lived in the physical realm alongside humans however they did have to go away and hide from us because we destroy their home so now they live in the astral realm but they can actually still help us do many things and i'm going to get into that just then in some of the pictures okay so those are the first few slides so basically, the term's fairy, and I know a lot of people ask this question, fae, fairy, fair folk, like what's the difference? So essentially, fairy, fae, and fair folk, they're used interchangeably. So fae is more a broad term that refers to all mythical beings associated with nature or the supernatural. And this includes fairies. So, you know, like also other creatures like elves, sprites, gnomes, goblins, even demons are under the fae rank and pixies, dryads, tree spirits, these are all under the fae rank. So fae is a really big term to really describe all these mythical beings that are associated with nature or the supernatural or earth in some form or way. And the fae are spiritual beings that come from pure light. Um, so they come from angelic energy, but not all fae stayed within the light in the history of earth and that's why the dark on Sealy court was created which essentially is dark phase and i'll get more into that um so this dark court for the phase was created for phase who wanted to choose to stay in the darkness and serve themselves only so they wanted to stray away from the path and the rules of the light so the fae also doesn't understand mortality the way we do as humans so just like in the movies, they did get some of the things right in the media. So phase don't die. They basically live on forever um, until they're killed off or unless the phase chooses to incarnate into a human or do something else with their soul energy. And there are also many different types of fae. They're very complex beings. They can change physical forms at their own will. So yes, they do shapeshift in the 5D I am not too aware of how much they would shapeshift when they were living in the 3D, but I know in the astral, they're able to change their form at any time. And sometimes they can even change into a completely different animal. Like, I know they can disguise themselves as other animals like cats. Like, sometimes I see a cat and you can just tell that there's a fairy energy around it. And sometimes that may be a disguise. Or there was one time, actually, I was coming to my family place and... I got out of the car and there was a cat that was waiting for me, almost as though it was sent by like a fae. And I already knew that the fae had sent this cat to me because as soon as I noticed the cat, it walked away. Like it was just waiting for me to notice it and be aware and it walked away. So that was the real life examples that I got that, um, you know, animals and fae, they work interchangeably and fae can essentially, you know, like hide themselves and as like a shape-shifting energy to an animal or like a bird, any animal they connect to as a fae, or they could just stay in their own form. It really just depends on the fae you're talking to. But yeah, so they're very complex and, um, you know, each fae has their own features that makes them unique. So they don't all look like humans. Some of them do look like humans. Some of them, yeah, exactly. Some of them can be six feet tall. They can be three feet tall. They can be so tiny or like so big. And some of them could even be bigger than us, actually. Some of them are like really tall, but it really just depends on the specific species of the fae, the type of fae and, you know, who they are in general. Um, 
So they also remain spirits, some of them, but then some of them do choose to have like animalistic features. So you might see a fae that looks like a cat or a tiger, or you might see a fae that looks like a water spirit. Like it doesn't look like, you know, like a human, but then you see other fae and you're wondering why do they look more human-like than the other ones? That's because essentially it's the element they're in. It depends on the element they're in. It also depends on their rank. You know, in terms of like royalty and just like how they choose to like show themselves, because at the end of the day, they can't control how they look, but they can control how they appear, right? So, um, some other fae might have human features. They might have animal features. It's really different than you know. You're never gonna find a group of fae that looks exactly the same. Basically, just like humans, I want us to remember that they're very unique and very powerful. So the phase also another rule is they're very passionate about their words and names. So <laughs> yeah, so that's a brownie, um, Andy. That's a brownie, and that fae is a fae that can actually. I love how you guys are sending pictures before I even get to talk about the type of phase. That fae helps you clean your house, and I just cleaned today. And the phase, um, the brownies always help me like clean quicker. So I'm able to get through the work I have to do in my house when it comes to cleaning faster, and I'm able to have more energy to clean. And also sometimes they may like clean for you without you asking them. You come back and it seems like something seems a little cleaner. You feel the energy in the space feels nicer, even if it's really dirty. That's because they've cleaned the space energetically. So yeah, that's a brownie. Bro, and... can I ask you a personal question about that? Yeah, like... you can. What has it been like actually having the fae within your house and within oh and around you? Because the only experiences I've had, I've not had as much as you, but yeah. I have experienced those one where they clean the house. Like especially if I take a mushroom and they all over the damn place, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> y'all helping a brother out? And they're like, Yeah, yeah, we got you, right? And they're like, I could feel like they'll tell me open the window and then the breeze will come yeah. and just like sweep up all the oh. energy out. I'm like, wow, like <laughs> How so I'm so happy. Your yeah okay i love that you said that because i love to hear other people's experiences on how the phase helped them but for me okay so even just showering today honestly the water phase were te- like i was so tense and they were telling me like relax like let the water like wash over you like let it like almost like i, w- I have a problem um in terms of accepting like i have a problem of acceptance i don't know they were like you're not accepting the water and i'm like i didn't really understand what they meant but as soon as like um the fae the water fae explained it to me i felt my energy like everything like release all the way down to the drain so like they helped me visualize so well like sometimes i may not understand what a spirit is telling me but the fae are able to like make me understand i don't know through telepathy through my clear audience and also they work with my clear sentence a lot i'm noticing I thought I was like my clear sentence was getting blocked because I was using my clear audience too much, but like recently I've been it's been like opening up. I've been feeling more, and that's because of them. They are able to help you tap into your intuitive abilities by you just feeling them around because they have such strong energy and they're everywhere. There's not just one of them that will be in your room. If you have one face, you probably have more. So their energy has a lot of power in our realm and we as humans because they have such childlike energy we feel it because they are they love from their heart chakra they're like they literally speak from their heart chakra they're essentially beings that come from love and light so you can feel them around you and they can really help you grow for me you know this is my personal experience they've helped me like feel more comfortable experimenting with new foods and like even like when i feel like i'm being very unhealthy all of a sudden i feel like i want to eat more fruit they make me want to go back to nature anytime i feel stressed they also make me realize that the trees i started learning from them that the trees actually hold a lot of knowledge that we do not realize more knowledge that even i don't have like even half of us in the server could not have as much knowledge as a tree because trees have lived longer than all of us so they were saying if you ever feel lost in life you're thinking your guides are not giving you the answers or tarot is not working or something go to the trees and i didn't really understand what they meant till i actually did so i've been speaking to the trees and it's honestly helped me and they've helped me connect to animals too they've helped me be able to like telepathically see how an animal is doing and like speak to them and also just tap into the emotions of animals 
and they've also healed my fear of like insects because i i told you like i don't like spiders and like i get so scared of spiders and insects but they've helped me like understand what they really are they're not here to harm me and that also i feel like i'm more in tune with the whole universe when i work with the phase it makes me realize that i i'm everything and everything is me like and i know everyone knows that but i don't think everyone really gets it so once i fully understood what that meant that everything is me and i am everything i understood how much the fey had helped me once i understood that because it really changed my perspective on my whole life any time i have anxiety or overthinking or any of those like negative thoughts i always remember that this is just me experiencing this thought and i am not this thought i've had other me other human consciousnesses and other consciousnesses in different planets where i experienced so many things and none of that was fully me i was just experiencing it so why would i care when a single moment in time a single speck in time is supposed to affect me when time isn't real like it makes me kind of just like go out from myself and from my ego working with the faith it helps me tap into source that's my um i guess like experience with the phase but this is just my experience with the seely phase so i i wouldn't say it's the same for the dark phase cuz that would be a whole different thing <laughs> but yeah so cashes with the seely phase they've definitely helped me a lot just know who i am and heal from trauma specifically they've helped me heal that's the biggest thing they've done um cool. but i've never told yeah. you about like the wars with humans and fake cuz i was just actually looking through uh some maleficent clips and yeah. uh share my screen a little bit for some of y'all to see what I'm looking at but yeah, could you tell us a little bit about the wars and like how that has worked Yeah so basically from what I know because I didn't really do much research cuz again you know the research out there is not all true so if I research they tell me okay this is true that's wrong this is true but from what I they told me um they said that the war started with like i just a lot of masculine energy being in control basically there's a lot of masculine energy that was in control at the time in terms of the human realm and i think at the time we they had a queen i think mab was the queen but they had a fake queen who was in charge of like all the phase or like a certain group of phase in the seely court and the one seely court but the phase were basically helping out the I feel like I'm getting downloads now too, but the phases are basically helping out the humans. So they would bring them like, you know, good luck and like I remember like the humans, even yeah, even in Maleficent like the um there was like a kid that was born, right? And I think her name was Aurora, I forgot her name, but they had like three fairies that came to bring them good luck. And I also noticed that that was true. Like they were telling me that yes, so we would help humans and anytime they would have a baby, we would bring them like good luck. And if they didn't invite us, then basically the baby could get bad luck for the rest of their life. Just like how Maleficent cursed the child. It's almost like how they would curse, you know, children, but this is like the dark phase and the light phase. because back then there was still some darkness, but it wasn't as much as it is now. Like everything had polarity and there was always a difference. But even the dark phase and the light phase back then, it seems like they worked together more than they do after the war. So the war really divided the fey community and the human and fey community. Like so the humans and the fey um essentially what I, you know, have been told that happened is that they tried to kill and capture the fey because they saw them as like little like um trinkets almost like they sell them as like almost like jewelry like something that's like fancy and nice that they want to have or this exotic creature that they want to have and some of them were like killed some of them were brutalized and sold and like a lot of things happened and they did disrespect the phase they also cut the forest they started making more wood and like houses and stuff you know paper whatever you use with trees so many things you can use with trees and they you know obviously people need to cook too so they cut down all the trees and like the phase were confused like what are you doing you're killing us right so after that they basically just went to war they were fed up and they were like okay we're done and then okay sorry guys i'm like reading the chat hit our exactly yeah so it's like the phase they're not only just from earth they're phase on other planets too i from my research i've learned only about the phase on earth but i know that 
they exist in other planets and i want to know more about that actually so once i do i can definitely let you guys know but from what i know with the war essentially humans were killing their their home they were stealing them they were kidnapping them being brutal and like just also something about over sexualization and like they're basically children right so you can imagine like it's a fairy like like it's just so dark there was a lot of dark energy that humans were trying to inflict on the fae and the fae's were not happy about that so they chose to like fight back and because of that a lot of the fae turned dark because they were sad they were angry they they had lost so much family like a lot of fae's died actually and then obviously like after that they realized that they cannot live in the same realm as us because if a human like literally they were running for their lives like if a human sees them they would have to hide they realized they had to shift dimensions and they went into the 5D and the upper dimensions because they couldn't live there anymore and honestly this was just in the i'm pretty sure phase existed in the physical realm just in the 60s like this wasn't like crazy long ago like they were here here you know and then it's it's kind of like it's just traumatic for them that they had to go but i think it's better that they're in a different dimension but that's all i know about like from what they've told me about the war cuz i'm not actually like i didn't want to go in depth on that today you know but i don't know cash do you know more about what happened like specifically apart from the you know killing their plant um killing their homes and destroying their Yes. Like so everything that you said was true, especially with the dimensions, like how yeah. they were in the 3D and then there was just too much conflict and division. Humans are just in their mind humans are still too primitive and ghetto. So no, it's going to and wait until we are in the 5D earth when when our galactic family comes down 2027 2028, that's when I bet there's going to be a lot more knowledge about fairies coming out. Yeah. And so I noticed that the, there was a lot of wars way back. And I'm just talking maybe just a hundred, um, a hundred years ago, we could just go back then and see how much of the Fey wars. And I like how Stavros put this here. He said, this is sad. If you think about it, Earth's history is similar to galactic history. I mean, we say that all the time, right? He put the Lyra Draco wars and he put the Fey human wars. And it brought back a lot of memories when you're talking about how they would over sexualize them and stuff yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Huge. That was that was a big thing too, the over sexualization. When they told me, I was really shocked because I didn't like I didn't know, you know, you're not gonna see it on like Google or anything if you research. So they told me and I was like, wait, what? Like you guys are children. Why would they like it's it's like, you know, I mean, we have child trafficking on earth, so I'm not shocked, but it's just really sad that that was true when I heard it. Like, wow. Like, fairies are so majestical and beautiful. Like, the fact that humans could think to, like, abuse them really says a lot about humans, you know? <laughs> but, um, okay, so I'm going to go more. Does anyone have any points they want to talk about or any fairy sightings before I... I do. There is something regarding fairies in my culture in my okay. culture there is something um it's usually a bad thing about fairies especially the fairy circles it said that you can only enter the fairy circle if you are invited because if you're not you're going to die and if you see fairies dancing in the during the night yeah they invite you into the fairy like fairy circle of dance you are going to dance until you die <laughs> and yeah, there is okay, another true. one about death, and that is when, um, because uh, Serbs in the past had a lot of horses and barns with them, so fairies would usually braid the horse's hair, and if you unbraid the hair next morning, or if anybody unbraids the hair, a bad luck is going to happen to the whole family, usually death, oh. or something like that. Honestly. You have to let fairies unbraid it themselves. Yeah, that is... So did you want me to tell you, well, the facts about that? Because it is based behind truth, you know, it's not yeah. all lies. But okay, so basically the dancing around the fairy ring or like the, if you see fairies dancing or you see a fairy ring, if you go in it, first off, you're going through a portal. That's what a fairy ring is. So it's a type of a portal and you're entering mm -hmm. the realm. And the dancing, I actually, I wanted to talk about that. So that's perfect that you brought it up. 
so it's true you could die like you could dance till you die but you're not actually going to die they wouldn't kill you it's just you're gonna be really exhausted because this happened to me before where like i didn't realize i was getting exhausted and my spirit guys that you had to tell me to chill because i was about to fall but i was having so much fun and i was in the moment i didn't realize but basically yeah, yeah. you could you could die you could like it's a possibility but it's only if you like I don't know, it's different, like, if you walk in their circle, something bad could happen, but if you're just with them and you meditate, like, beside the circle, and they want, yeah. like, to dance with you, they're not going to mm-hmm. harm you, you know, you're just going to get a little yeah. tired and weak, you feel they drained. Can, you know, their circle, like, they can, yeah. like, they'll tell you to, like, play with them, they're not always so, like, territorial. Yeah, exactly. They like to show, like they like to share their life. Yeah, they do. And the second thing you said about the what was the second thing you said about the phase, um, with the in your culture. Um, I mean, it's mostly about that. It's not really anything positive, <laughs> even though they are they are <laughs> yeah. always depicted as as the positive ones. I, and also in my yeah. culture, there is a distinguish between um like elves and fairies yeah. so there yeah, there isn't like a fae as a broad term oh okay yeah so that's another thing i was going to talk about in different cultures they're going to tell you different things what i learn is from you know celtic and i learn from irish mythology and i'm you know i'm mostly learning based off certain mythology and then asking the mm-hmm. fae for confirmation. So I didn't really go in depth in other cultures, but I, I from my research and for what they told me, other cultures have many names for the fae. Some of them don't even consider them fairies. Some of them consider them demons and they're not, but they consider them, them that. And some mm-hmm. of them don't use the word fae, but they are, elves are fae. They are fae. They will tell you that if you ask them, but they're not a type of fairy. Fairies are a whole different class of fae. So again, I can get into that okay. in more depth and I'll send you guys pictures. But yeah, elves are phased though, so they can definitely help you out. Mm-hmm. And I can also give more descriptions of what they can help out if you guys are curious too. I have like so, a lot of information. What is the biggest difference between when we look at elves um, and fae? Actually, can you give us the definition of what those are what makes them categorized as different okay so elves essentially they're nature spirits that they work okay so they don't have wings right so they are not they're not the air element they're essentially the earth elements and they work they're earth fairies so they're elemental fairies that's what an elf is so they work with the earth element they can help you you know bring growth in your life a lot of like they can help with witches who do spells of like money manifestations they can help you with that too they can help you with protection like if you're meditating they can be like okay this is how you're going to meditate they can also direct you to places i see elves like telling me oh go this way go that way so they're really good at like leading you to a path you're meant to be on spiritually but i guess that's more of like what they're meant to do to help you in terms of who they are they protect nature and the ground like they're they're the ground phase is what i call them the 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 earth phase you know like they protect the floor they protect the root chakra like they rule it they you know they guide it they make sure that the plants on the floor have life they make sure that you know the bugs that humans are stepping on are not dead like they take care of every little thing that you as a human would not think of because you're up there so elves essentially are the most groundest fey you could work with is what i see them as and then the other well there's also goblins there's um leprechauns i don't know if you guys want me to get into that i can also get into that but for elves that's what you know i see them as uh, i thought about it but it's right the fairy circle oh my god that's a big fairy circle i would love to hear about sorry guys i'm so slow in reading the comments <laughs> But I'm reading it now. I would love to hear about the Celtic versus Fae and whether you consider Celtic as reptilian. I wouldn't consider a Celtic as a reptilian. Um, but I want to get into what the different Fae's are actually in, well, the Celtic mythology. Um, so yeah, Celtics, I wouldn't consider them reptilians. I don't know if you're referring to Fae's being reptilians, but they're not. Um, 
but the different kind of phase, oh, there's so many, but I want to start with the elements because that's where it begins. Well, it begins in the Sili and Unsili Fae, and I can also get into that. So the Sili Fae essentially is referring to a group of Fae's who are like, like the ones we see in the stories. They're lovely, cheerful, they're friendly, they're helpful, and like they just love to help humans. They're really um, respectful too. They can also be like known as the fairies of the summer. So you see how you see like the flowers and like you feel really happy in the summer. That's because the Sili Fae's, which are light, are ruled and you know, they're ruling the summer essentially. So they rule the whole of summer. And the Unsili court, which is seen as dark, as dark, rules the winter court. Um, but one thing I want to say, because I noticed a lot of people who, you know, speak about the phase, they always say that the Sealies are good and the Unsili is bad, but that is not true. There's there's no bad or good or good or evil with the Fae. It's more about like that's just how the media portrays it and i think i think it's an oversimplification of the fae like they're not that you know like you can't just simplify a fae by saying it's good or bad and i want us to remember that all courts of the fae you know like as well as all fairies need equal respect whether they're dark or they're light um so because at the end of the day like they all protect earth every single fae whether dark or light protects earth and nature in one way or another um, I'm going to read the comments right now. I feel like someone is asking a question. Yes, yes. So they also hate iron. So do not. I'm going to talk more about offense if you guys are interested. But don't give don't give the face iron. They would see it as an, as an insult and they would be offended. Uh, bye, Rena. I feel like she already left. But um, thank you for coming. But yes, so they don't like iron. And that's an offering they would never accept because iron can actually harm them. And a lot of the humans in the past, in the war, the face, they actually used iron to, to try and kill them because they found out that that was their weakness. So because of, because of how they died, majority of them died because of iron, now they have like trauma and, you know, it's still in their generational line. Like they're, they're all traumatized. So if you give them iron, it's going to be something that they take as an offense. And just like how people who had past lives in Atlantis you know, they got killed by water and it's like they love water, but now they're scared of it in a new life. It's the exact way they are still scared of iron because it's what killed majority of them. Yeah, so give them, I can talk more about that. So give them honey, um, you can give them milk. You can also, you know, if you're a witch, you can braid your hair because braiding your hair is a form of not magic. So they love when, when I braid my hair, they're always like, oh my God, she's braiding her hair because I'm literally doing magic. So like every braid you, you do, or you could just do one braid, you could set an intention for the braid and like, you know, say, oh, this is, I'm doing this as representation for the face and they will appreciate that. So you could also cook for them. And if you're eating food, you could leave like a little plate on the side for them. They love milk so much. Like, and also they would prefer you to make stuff for them, like rather than like buy food for them. So if you're to give them a food offering, it would be better... I learned this one from Faith. <laughs> yes. So, oh my God, guys, I'm like, I need to read the comments. I'm being slow at reading right now. Yes, they are druids. <laughs> Sarah. Yes. So I want to talk more about, yes. Also, they love it if you have a nice garden. They're like here right now, like, yes, yes, yes. But they're really excited that I'm even talking about them because a lot of humans don't respect them as much as they should be. So that's why I wanted to really let you guys know that if you're to work with them, please respect them because, you know, whether they're dark or light, they still have good intentions for nature. And that's all that matters in my opinion. But yeah, so for the offerings, I wanna actually get into how you can connect with them because I feel like everyone wants to just get into that. You guys are already like, we know what a fae is. Let's just get into how can we connect to them? So for me, what I do is I have an altar. So you can create an altar if you want to connect to them. But first I'll say is that you have to pick which element you connect to the most. So if you're trying to choose to work with a fae, you have to like realize what element do I feel called to? Do you feel called to the element of fire, water, air, earth, spirit, so many other elements out there. And there's every type of fae you can imagine. So if you feel connected to a certain element right now in your life, I can tell you that the fae is probably reaching out to you because sometimes you just feel like, oh, I just want to cook every day or I just want to go out to nature. 
the airspace are calling you. Oh, I just want to swim everywhere. I wish the whole world was filled with water. <laughs> the water phase are calling you, you know? Or you feel like, why do I just want to burn things? Like, I'm not like, I'm not crazy, but I just want to burn things. I have this urge to just burn things. Or I have this urge to just like, look, you know, go have like a little picnic at a campfire. You just feel like you're connected to fire or you don't understand why you have this obsession with certain elements. That's because the phase are trying to reach out to you through these feelings through your clairsentience. They want you to feel and really appreciate this element. And if you also feel like you're suddenly caring so much about animals, like you're really empathetic lately and you're like, you're like, why do I feel so like sad that all these animals are dying, humans are killing them, or you feel like you want to go vegetarian. For me, I knew the phase were calling out to me as soon as I went vegetarian. I could not eat meat anymore. And that's because, you know, I'm not a CV some on CV phase eat meat, but CV phase usually don't eat meat. Um, so I didn't feel connected to eating meat. You know, to me, it was really like, and it was an energetic reason why I went vegetarian. I just felt wrong eating it. And that's because of my phase where like in my energy space, letting me know how bad it was making my, like it was, it was making my vibration really low. And, you know, it just helped me realize that the earth phase and the water phase, the fire phase, like all the elements that I connect to have been reaching out to me my whole life as phase and I did not know. So, um, okay, let me read the chat. Do they have feminine? Yes, yeah, so there's different kind of phase. There's feminine, masculine. I'm gonna send you guys more pictures actually on the chat. Um, yeah, so Anita, I wanna say the reason majority of the phase are depicted as women is because men are the ones create an art about the faith. Think about it. We live in a society that is very masculine. It's, it's literally ruled by masculine energy. So the people who are creating depictions of faith are all men. So they're all going to sexualize the faith. They're going to make them look all women. You know, like you don't see pictures of male masculine faith because it's like, you know, men are the one making it. So I just feel like we have to realize that the media is not going to ever give us information that we truly need. And it's going to give us, you know, truth in plain sight and whatnot. And it's up to us to decipher what's the real truth and, you know, realize the most popular fae writer. Okay, I'm also going to share some books to you guys. And no, I've not read any of her books, actually. Um, is it like a, is it a fiction? If it's fiction, then I definitely have not read it. Because for me, the, the books that I read about the phase are all um, non-fiction. Like it's all factual, basically. Um, factual like information about how to work with the phase and witchy stuff. If you want, I can send you guys books too. But it's mostly based on witchcraft. So um, you can still learn from it. But there are spells there you can do. If you're not into like witchcraft, you can still learn from it. But just do note that it's, based off like witchcraft and fairy magic i yeah, actually started so... to realize how much the like i don't even like calling it witchcraft no more but um yeah. maybe or witchcraft for lack of a better word how much is actually linked to the fae i found that really interesting because we yeah. made such a negative connotation like oh witchcraft but you'll find and i've noticed that the more you work with fairies the more witchy you start to get the more like for quote unquote spell work you want to do like you want yeah. to make, bring more nature energy in or make a safe space for fairies in your room or whatever it is you start to notice it's like you're doing quote unquote witchcraft meanwhile that's just a label for it you're really just connecting with the, to the fae. Fae. exactly and you know it's actually funny because um I was reading a book that was talking about the phase not long ago and they told, well, not they told me, sorry guys, I read <laughs> that um, in uh, this religion, I'm not sure, was it paganism or something, but basically um, in Ireland, the phase were actually the ones who taught the women, the, the, you know, the people who were practicing witchcraft how to be witches. Like apparently all the information we know as witches came from fairies. And I was so yes. shocked when I found that out. I was like, what? <laughs> you taught them like, energy manipulation and Slay! everything. Yeah. Slay! Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, exactly. It's really just 
energy manipulation and them teaching us how to use our elements. And I want to go back into like the benefits of the fae. So basically, essentially, they can heal you. So, you know, they have like fairies have a lot of like abilities that humans don't have. And if they agree to help you, they can like teach you some of their skills and some of their skills that's helped me is like healing shape-shifting like they put you know protection and like they can help with your intuition and i also notice a lot they help with happiness like if you're feeling really depressed and you call on the steely phase the air phase you're going to feel so enlightened and feel like you just want to get going and be in your masculine energy and get things done and they're going to bring that inner child energy and make you really happy and make you connect to source more so they're able to really influence your feelings compared to other entities I've noticed. Like even my guys actually are not able to influence my movement in the physical the way the phase are. The phase can literally make me spin around if they wanted to. Like it's, they have so much power that as small as the ones in my room are, it shocks me how much power they have. And that's to just say how powerful they are as beings, you know? And again, they come in different sizes. So you could have a thing in your room that's the size of you. And you're like, why is everything going missing? Why do I feel like things are going wrong? You could have a dark fate in your room, you know? They're not all light. And it really just depends on what your energy is like, if they like you or not, and if they're drawn to you. But yeah, so they're basically, um, fairies are known for like their healing abilities. Um, and I just think they can expand your knowledge. For me, they expand they expanded my knowledge with like herbal medicine. So I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a herbalist. So with the phase, they've helped me with herbal medicine. And they were actually the reason I started going into herbalism because I wanted to work with them more. And the only way I was able to connect with them was when I was in nature. And they just told me like, hey, how about you make some tinctures? And I was like, you know, I didn't really want to listen because in, during the summer, I just wanted to just do my own thing. Like I wanted to get into herbalism really slowly. But as soon as I made my first tincture, I just kept going, like I kept researching. Like it was just something that I knew was my passion. And they spark that within me. So if you feel like you're connected to herbs, herbalism, you should definitely work with the earth phase. They can help you with that because they'll help you understand how much the plants we have on earth can actually be beneficial for like our physical and astral bodies because plants can help your astral body too. And, you know, like fairies can like manipulate energy. So they can essentially just help you nurture yourself and like make you feel better and, they honestly they just have really they have a lot of benefits in terms of healing and helping you tap into your creative abilities if you feel like you're blocked creative um like in your creativity then they can help you with that and they can they can also help sorry guys i'm getting overstimulated because like i said the phase when i talk about them they come in my space and then it gets chaotic so there's a lot of them in my space right now and i'm trying to ignore them but yeah I'll so they can definitely question, please. yeah do they generally avoid males like um us? okay yes <laughs> so i just got a yes like i i i i actually did not know the answers to that question so they told me yes so from what I'm getting, they avoid masculine energies because it can be a little aggressive and they live within their inner child energy. And majority of the phase um, are feminine energy, but they can be in a masculine body. Like, I feel like humans have put the term woman and man in like bodies, but that's not how it works. Energy is just energy. So a fae can be masculine or feminine, right? But they do not they're not like drawn to masculine human beings on earth because the majority of the masculine energies we have on earth right now are low vibrational. And you know, the, the masculine energies who are high vibrational, they will be drawn to, but I'm seeing, they're telling me it's mostly the brownies and the phase like elves that are drawn to the masculine energies on earth. And then the phase like the air and the water phase are drawn to feminine energies. But I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me, actually, like water, feminine, you know, earth, masculine. I mean, uh, can I yeah, ask? Another so, question? Yeah, 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 of course. Ask as many questions. They're here. So. Do, do they uh, understand that some males just aren't in control of their own, like, how to say it? Emotions? Reality? Maybe, or... Oh, emotions? Yeah, maybe yeah, that. Maybe that. Maybe that. Because, like, if a male is in control of himself, 
he can control himself around uh, a fairy or a, an angel or a demon, but if yeah. he isn't, he's obviously a danger. Like, how much okay. do they recognize that that thing about so, males? So they, the fairies are really powerful. They can see the future. So if let's say like basically to answer your question, they don't judge you for being a man or a male or masculine energy. They don't judge anyone. They actually are the last being or entity that would judge you ever because they can see your future and your past. So they know if you're going to like going to get better as a human. They know if you were, you know, low vibrational in the past. They know what you're doing right now and what you're going to do in the future. Like they're really sentient beings. They're really in paths with the astral realm and source. So they can never judge a man. What well, at least the Sealy phase is what I'm, you know, who I'm referring to. They can never judge a man, you know, for being masculine or having emotional immaturity or any sort of problems because we're human and they get that. Like they understand us really, you know, like they get humans. They're scared of us because of what we've done in the past. But they don't yeah. actually hate us, you know. They have so much love to give, and the only ones that I can say have some sort of hate is the unseely phase, which, in a sense, they're dark. So that they have every reason to hate. If they're dark, they can't tap into love energy, so they're just going to hate. And that has nothing to do with you. That's on them, you know. Like you are light, so you don't have to worry about if a, a phase dark. You just work with the light phase. You work with what you're drawn to, you know. Um, so yeah, they they don't judge you at all. They they love everyone, including masculine energies, because that's how you know. Without masculine, there wouldn't be feminine. Without feminine, there wouldn't be masculine. It's yin yang. We always need a balance in the universe. So they understand that men have to do the masculine um, role. <laughs> yeah, awesome. and I feel like they a really important thing to do when we talk about the divine masculine and divine feminine energies is detach it from physicality. So it's not yeah. talking about like a gender. When we're talking about divine feminine and divine masculine energy, we're talking about energies. And so these are just the same as saying something like, oh, light and dark or um, like, oh, different elements. Like these are all polarities of energies that build each other and create each other. So exactly. when we're talking about divine masculine and feminine energy, it's important to balance them. But um, yeah. But so, like, the Fae could have, like, any of these polarities of energy, but um, if you're, yeah, like, they, they're they going to have, like, a flux of different polarities of these energies, and, you know, different species from different planets may even have, like, um, different ones. Like, I know Hadarians, so, like, the Fae beings on Hadar that are here. I know a lot of them have very strong divine feminine energy because that's like a big thing on their planet that polarity of energy is like almost like part of the culture and like the way of being there uh for the beings and so they have very strong divine feminine energy and their heart chakras are huge huge okay. huge huge and so it's really important to remember that we're talk uh talking about their energy and not their physical body or like you know something that retains the physical because these beings are energy yes that's that's absolutely right um so they can't essentially really judge you for anything because you're not your physical body your energy right so yeah, yeah guys i'm so sad i couldn't put the presentation up because like i had so many pictures i wanted to show y'all but it's, okay. so pretty. it's honestly yeah um so i'm gonna send you guys some pictures of the fairy rings too because i know someone talked about the fairy rings and like um how their culture said, or I think it was, I'm not sure who it was, but they said how, like, if you dance near a fairy ring, you could die. So, um, basically, I would say, if you guys come across a fairy ring, be respectful. Don't step in it. That's the first thing I'll say. Do not step in the fairy ring. And I'll say it again. Do not step in the fairy ring, please. Because I've noticed, like, I've seen this happen. My friend, you know, literally sees a ring and steps in it and then is, like, laughing. I'm like, okay, great. Well, then now the fairies are going to come your room <laughs> and you're gonna lose so much like the phase are really tricks like they're tricksters they can play around with you they can mess with you and they can ruin your life actually they want to ruin your life they could like you guys understand they have a lot of power so please if you see a fairy ring do not step in it unless they tell you you can and honestly even if they do don't like that's a trick um but what i do if i see a fairy ring is i sit beside it 
And then you meditate and you feel the energy of the portal you're sitting beside. And that's a fae portal. So you can connect to them that way. And then if you feel like you stepped in the ring and you didn't know, and you're like, oh no, they're going to hate me. No, they're not. Because they, they're very intentional. So if a human does something unintentionally, they're not going to be mad at you. Cause again, they know everything, you know, so they're not going to feel offended because they know the intention that you're having. So if you feel like you've offended them, leave an offering of like honey or like something that's really special to you. That's like shiny. Like they really love silver. So like you could leave like silver jewelry or you could just like leave like some wine. They love, you know, red wine, rosé and like just anything sweet or like honey. They love honey so much. Um, and also don't give them offerings that are from nature. Like essentially the first thing that I learned when working with the phase is that they don't like to be given offering that that's from nature because essentially you're taking something from them and you're giving them back because they yeah. they're nature spirits, right? <laughs> yeah, and like also like if you're like plucking flowers for them, you're killing the like you're killing the plant. Exactly. <laughs> like they are <laughs> like that's what they're there for is to protect those plants. Yeah. You're just plucking them up. It's almost like mockery to them. It's like yeah did they really just give me a dead plant like it's like <laughs> what like what do no, they mean by is... this this is what the fairies are thinking they're like what do they mean by this why are they giving me a dead plant like, they no, just get I so confused like my friend's like oh i'll give this the face i'm like that's something no, they you don't got it from a bay you can't give like, it to a bay if you're gonna <laughs> them something plant them something like yeah you know? or cook like they love yeah, them. like them. so make them or- make them like some some dessert some yeah cake, or like you know like a garden like they love mm. when people garden girl i made them a whole like uh are these yeah so these are um fairy rings i'm gonna write that down um if you guys want i can like legit send you the whole um because i have a whole like research whatever like note if you're like curious about specific details that you missed or like maybe i didn't say it um, I was just I wondering how really how everything looks like, but now I understand. Okay, good, good, because that's what I've been trying to like. I didn't want to make the presentation like words. I just wanted to like it was just all pictures, just so you guys could see what they look like. Because that's a problem that I had when I was working with the phase. I didn't know what they looked like because again, like my clairvoyance hadn't really come in, and I couldn't really see them. So I was just confused. I was like, I've seen Tinkerbell and like all these fairy movies. What do fays look like? So I have to do my own research. And, you know, over the, like, months I've worked with them, I've done a lot of research, and I found pictures of them that are accurate. And sometimes they tell me, oh, we don't look like that. Or they're like, oh, we look like that. So, like, if, it, if they say, like, oh, that's right, we look like that, I, I, like, I screenshot it, and I just leave it on my phone. So, like, I have so many pictures of fairies just so I know what they look like. And, like, you know, it's just easier to visualize things. And then this way, if you actually see them, you can know that, okay, that was a sprite fae that was a water fae you know that was so you can identify them um but i would say you're not likely to see them though because fae don't show themselves in the physical realm but if you do see them though you're lucky <laughs> i'll say that for sure because it's only like people they find really special that they show themselves to um and even i haven't seen them in the physical realm like i've only like seen their aura color but i've not actually seen their body or anything like that so it's like they really love to hide and just exist within that realm but you're going to know of a phase around you you don't have to worry about seeing them because they fly really fast so you're gonna feel like overstimulated you're gonna feel like maybe even itchy and like you're gonna get muscle spasms and if you get muscle spasms when you're around entities that usually means they're touching you for me at least it usually means they're touching me or like my clairsentience is like you know letting me know that they're near so if you feel like you get twitches muscle spasms or like even shivers a fae could be beside you or around you let me tell y'all okay. something. They used to hide things from me. So like when I first saw the first fairy circle, <laughs> I knew I was looking at that and GFL was telling me that like, okay, just recognize it. It's going to play a part later. I had no idea I was going to be using it in here. But I was just like, okay, cool. And I was learning about it. They were giving me some like <laughs> insight. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, fairies aren't my thing, but I'd love to interact with them once in a while. And so that's the moment when I was taking mushrooms and I was going outside. I felt like I was in Tinkerbell running up and down outside in the forest. <laughs> and then these, there would just be like spirits that I would see wish around. Of course, I felt like a crackhead looking around. Everybody's like, are you okay? 
They're quick, bro. They're quick. <laughs> they catch yeah. Yes. They're quick they and they're so playful. Quick. Yeah. They were in my so room fast. the other day and they hid <laughs> some stuff. Like, what was they it? I forget what it was. They love you. Literally, it was they like, right. it was, um, oh, I think it was my lighter. And I mean, you know, I was ready for that joint and I couldn't <laughs> find that lighter for days. Not the lighter. They're like, girl, you stuck for too much. Quit. <laughs> no, like, I'm telling you, I was like, I'm like, I stood in my room and I was like, listen, y'all, I don't play these games. Let me find my lighter. And then I heard them laughing in the corner. Nye, 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 nye. So they thought it was funny. And then, <laughs> and then after I found the lighter and they left like something beside it, it was like a, it was like a, we were just playing around type of energy and it was cute. Mm -hmm. So I started to realize from personal yeah. experience how their power could actually function and how they do things. Yeah. But they also like they do center around their element i noticed so like mm -hmm. you know fire is one of my main elements and so whenever i have fire around especially if it's just a candle lit in my room um it's like they're around it and they're teaching me about the truth of fire like it's so much more deep than you think like they can make you could have a whole university just on the elements because it's such a oh, deep yeah. It's like learning a whole science. And so they sit there and they teach me. I'm like, whoa. And so then the next time they wanted me to learn about water. So they would teach me a little more about water. So sometimes they're, they come through my portal just to teach me a few things. And then they'll guide me to go into nature. But yeah, when they were hiding stuff, I was like, listen, y'all, don't play with me. <laughs> but it was super fun. It was so fun. Okay. And guys, um, sorry, guys, I was replying. I was reading the text while Cash was talking. That's why I said okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to like say okay <laughs> to everything you said. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Cash, you're right. Like, they, oh my god. Also, you were talking, but they love you. They love your energy because they were like, as you said that, they were laughing, and I'm like, they're just really, really happy today. Is the energy I feel. But um, I sent you guys some pictures of the trees that they connect to. So they really love the oak and the apple tree. I notice that a lot. Like every time I go to an oak tree, there's always fae there. Or even a willow tree. If you go to a willow tree, I can guarantee you there's going to be a fae there. At least like three. There's always fae around the trees. So I sent now, you what some. What is with that? My mom loves willow trees. Oh. And there's always such a spiritual aspect related to them even like if you watch pocahontas yeah. for example it's always the willow trees that speak to people oh. like what is with I, that damn so, yeah so the willow spirit is actually a very powerful spirit that guides the trees um well guides the willow tree so that fate actually that fate is pretty big compared to the other phase like from what i've seen so that fate is like I see the willow tree as like royalty. Does that make sense? Maybe that's yeah. why it's really powerful. Like the it's almost like a royal tree. tree. Like the yes. The it's like, like the, the mother tree. And willows have a lot of like significance in oh, I can't remember what culture it was, but I know they're really powerful in terms of like growth and like manifestation. Like if you want like a child, for example, you're trying to like have a baby, go just like do a stall, put it under bury it under a willow tree and you're gonna get the child. Like they have a lot of magical properties. And the phase that work with them are really powerful. Um, as to why, I want to I want to know that. So I'm gonna do more research as to why they, the willow tree is like really magical. From what I'm told, it's they have like a special like. It's like they are like a channeler. They're yeah. like a it's like when I ask about willow trees and trees here on Earth, they show me these trees in like Sirius that yeah. we they're like really sacred to us and they are like the channeler trees so like they help us channel the planet consciousness for like any of the, the syrians and then it also has like innate like um it's like healing like the tree is very connecting like it's a very like important tree like i, I don't that know like it's very sacred Yes, and I also noticed that the willow tree has a lot of significance to the tree of to the tree of life. So I don't know if you guys know about the tree of life, but essentially, the tree that has all the energy stored. Um, and oh, actually, you know what? Callie of Sirius did tell me a bit about this. I don't know if they're here, but um, Callie of Sirius told me the drawing that I did that was a willow tree was the fae tree that holds all their energy and power. And oh, bye, Kingus. Another question. But yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, if a fairy, if 
if a fairy wants to like needs the help of a human if if it will need the help of a human yeah what will look like, look for in a human like in a male and in a female to do for fairy in a, a forest like okay so if they needed your help it would okay. probably be for food for like it, well it could be for food i wouldn't I, i wouldn't be sure if they would need the food so it wouldn't be them needing your help it would just be them wanting your help and if they needed your help honestly i don't see them going to humans like the energy i'm getting from them right now is they wouldn't go to humans they would go to the ones like like in terms of humans i mean the ones that are actually you know earth seeds they would go to star seeds like us who are awake and like who know a lot because we have more information about other planets so we can actually help them. So let's say like their crops are dying and they don't know what to do, then we can use the information we had like let's say in a past life in Centaurus for example or like in in like like Pleiades or something or like a planet that where you worked with the herbs, you could herb that you could help that fae and you know use that information from your subconscious and help them like grow plants and like fix what's going on with them. I'm trying to think of issues that the fae could have, but honestly, the fae do not go to humans for help a lot. So the only thing I could see them going for help is like food, like lack of food, lack of water, or them just needing water as an offering or nature dying. Yeah, so it's it's nature dying that they would really need help. They would be like, "Oh, can you tell people to not litter?" So for a man, for example, they could go to a masculine energy and tell them to tell their friends to not litter when they go out partying for example like a little tip or like they could tell like a feminine energy like oh you know don't throw your makeup in the in the bin throw it in the recycling like recycle reuse reduce you know don't throw waste because we are literally like our homes are dying and that means we are going to have to leave you know so essentially because the fae do live on earth in a different dimension they have their own place but they still live within nature so if we destroy more of nature they could still be hurt by it so that's the only way they would need our help is by us taking care of nature like that's which is the only way i don't see them needing anything else apart from that um yeah I but i hope that but... answered your question yes it did but why food like why uh, food for... <laughs> for food the reason i said that is because the phase that i have around me are always always asking for my food so i'm just like are you guys hungry you know like i don't really know if they're hung well i don't think they're hungry but like i just believe it's the energy of my food they always want so when they ask for food i don't think they're asking because they're hungry i think it's more they just want to connect to your me. energy because it's, yeah like it's unique like it's something very unique yeah. to them like exactly. that exactly like Like exactly. Like, exactly. And I think food has been something fixed. that like in our cultures it's always been something that's like significant and important. Like in the you know on earth every culture has a connection to food. And food is something that brings humans together. It's very powerful. I was actually talking about this the other day like how vulnerable you get when you're eating. So food is something that has a lot of power. You can do magic with, you know when you're cooking. I do magic in the kitchen too when I'm cooking and the phase help with that so they know yeah. how much you know how important it is and well, food is they... life and connection so makes yeah, sense Yeah exactly so yeah that's the only thing I'll I'll think they need help with but if they tell me anything else <laughs> that they need help with I'll let you know but so far it's only nature that they see as a problem right now they're just telling me they're like help us help nature you know Okay thank so, you No worries. But um okay, I'm trying to read the comments real quick, guys. Smoky old oh, tiger eye is so good for grounding. If you like meditate with that, you know, your root chakra is going to thank you. Smoky quartz too, that's really good obsidian. That was the first crystal I got, I think. And amethyst, yeah. Amethyst it was really good. Amethyst, I've been using that for my third eye a lot recently. It's been helping me with blue lotus. It's like the best pair. Thanks for the response. Oh, Crystal. Okay. All right. So I'm going to talk more about the food. Okay, let me send you guys some pictures. I okay. I'm going to explain what the pictures I sent were. So the first one that I sent with the flowers was essentially a picture that I took um in the summer where I felt energy of phase, and I know you guys probably can't like you can't see anything, right? But I 
I want you to tap into your clear sentience and look at the pictures I sent and really see if you can feel the energy of the fairies. Just don't push anything, don't force anything, just, you know, feel. Just I just want you to look at it and feel whatever comes to you. And for me, what I felt was fey energy, which is why I took those pictures. So you can just tap into it, just see, connect. Um, and then I also sent some pictures of like items you can like put on your altar. Like um, they love candles. So if you have some candles laying around, you can carve like literally a join or just carve something on it as identification of it being for the day and then light it saying your intention. Yeah, um, actually, uh, Gabriella, they didn't, they didn't grow near the tree. I was on shrooms and me and my friend picked some flowers and we, we gave the tree the offering like of flowers. <laughs> so we just like, I don't know, we were feeling really mystical that day. So we just decided to give a tree an offering and, and the tree loved it because it looked like it was growing out of the tree. So you saying that means like, it just looked natural, you know? <laughs> and I love that. Um, but yeah, so I want to go more in depth on again, what the face can help you with. So for some of us here who are trying to expand our consciousness spiritually, and you're trying to figure out, you know, like, how can I be more spiritual? How can I wake up more? Like, you feel like you're a little stagnant in your journey right now. The faith can help you with that. They can help expand, like, your consciousness. And, you know, just like how I said before, they move easily between the 3D and the 5D. So they can actually physically manifest if they want to. They can be physical right now if they want to, but they're choosing not to, right? So they're able to, like, move between different dimensions. And these faiths can actually act as, like, your guides, like, just like how you have spirit guides. And some people, actually, I want to say this, some people do have spirit guides that are phased. So you can have a spirit guide that's basically essentially any entity that has your best interest at heart. So some people have spirit guides that are phased. Some people have spirit guides that are demons too. Like I found that out during my journey of understanding the fae. And some people genuinely are really dark energies that their spirit guides are, fae, um, are demons. And those demons are not actually harming them. They're, they're protecting them. And it just shocks me how much darkness will protect darkness and light will protect light no matter what. Like, you know, because in my head, when I started my spiritual journey, I thought that spirit guides were just, you know, beings from a past life that love you or like, you know, I didn't really get the concept. But now I get it's just any entity that has a connection to you as a soul family that wants to help you in your incarnation can be your spirit guide if they qualify. So a fae can actually serve as your guide, even if they're not your spirit guide, and they can help you notice the astral realm. They can help you become more aware of the spirits and the entities in your room because once you start to notice them, you will notice other beings and that will increase, you know, your capability to open up your third eye. So essentially you'll be able to see through the realm and they can also help, you know, like I said, with your clear senses and feeling. You know, so um, I feel like the phase, they serve as like guardians, guardians, you know, I see them as guardians, like I said, little like earth angels of like the natural world like they know the best way to like work with the energies of plants and also stones i notice a lot of the fays know about a lot like stones have power guys just like how we love crystals stones are powerful too like sometimes i literally just collect stones so stones really help you ground to the earth and fays you know, they put all their energy in the plants and the stones and they can tell you anything you need because they understand the elements. They are the elements and they also understand like the solar and the lunar cycle. So if you're into like astrology and stuff like that, they can help you with that too. You know, if you're into like understanding the weather, you know, and like weather forecast, you're trying to like predict the weather and stuff like that. They can help you with that too. Um, but yeah, if they choose to work with you, they'll basically share their wisdom with you. Um, Yes. Oh my God, Rabbi, right? Like I have so many stones like in my house and I'm like, <laughs> what am I going to do with all these stones? So sometimes if I do like a spell jar, if I have a tiny little rock, I could put it in. Or like if I have like a, um, like I'm trying to meditate and I'm like, or like sometimes you just want to hold a stone. I don't know, guys. I Sometimes I just want to hold a stone. It makes me feel relaxed. So I just hold a stone and, you know, it makes me believe in its own sense it's a type of crystal you know like you are where you believe so in my head i'm like okay this 
someone is helping me ground and it could it could just be the placebo effect but i feel like when i hold stones i really connect to the earth element so for me i feel grounded but obviously they don't hold as much energy as crystals because crystals are really powerful but at the end of the day we are the ones with the energy you know these stones plants like we're the ones giving everything energy because we are the universe so we can't exactly expect an element to give us power you know so don't expect crystals to give you energy if you work with the phase it can help you don't also expect the phase to like change your life like if you're like in a bad place and you expect the phase to get you out of that bad place and fix all your problems that's not how it's going to work they're going to like make you realize your shadow aspect and they're going to they're also very honest like they're very blunt you know they could be tricksters but to me they're like if i need some information they are very honest and they're really quick when they speak like they speak really fast so you have to really like pay attention to the words that they're saying and know that they're there to help you for your own good but they're not going to make it easy for you you know like all they can do is guide you basically lyrans fire dragons Syrians water earth mentakins water yeah um i have a smooth medium yes exactly i love that because you know like when i was a kid i i told my friend that um if i was given a rock for a gift i would not be like i would be really happy and it was like really weird for me to say that because i was someone who like you know i didn't really care about gifts but like obviously i wanted the most shiniest thing ever but now i like i realize why i said that I, essentially what i was saying was like it's just the energy of like elements so if you give me like a candle for a gift because it's an element i'm happy right like if it's an element of like fire water earth or air like i will be really happy because that's what i connect to the most like just elements in general so and also faith can give you gifts guys so if you if you feel like and it's not just i think people forget it's not just physical gifts they can give you they can also give you energetic gifts so if you feel like you're missing something in life or you feel like you you don't have enough positive energy around you or there's a lot of negative things going on in your path they can bring in that joy and you know they can also physically bring you like crystals you could go to a beach and find like 10 crystals one day because the water fay was supporting you you know or in your best interest so the fays bring a lot of magic into your life and it's all it's actually so funny to the point that I know they know the future because when like I find their gifts like they laugh when I find it because like almost like they were waiting for my reaction like they knew I was going to find it like they're able to plan things out in the future so they know every step you're going to take and they know when you're going to take it and I actually want to talk more about the fairies of fate because that's not talked about a lot and these fairies of fate I don't know if you guys watch movies like Tinkerbell and Maleficent when you were younger but the fairies of fate were in movies like that so these group of fairies they basically deal with destiny and i'm going to send a picture they almost look angelic like they look like angels that's why i see them as and these fairies are essentially like they're fairies that like decide like they deal with destiny and like the fate of human kind that's why they're called fairies of fate you know just like how we have guardian angels like archangel michael we have fairies of fate who essentially decide what's going to happen to a human So sometimes they're referred to as birth spirits. So in some cultures I was learning that sometimes they refer to them as birth spirits, just like you have a baby, you have a baby shower and then you invite the fays and they will bring like good luck and like they'll give you like gifts that your child is going to have and essentially they're deciding the fate of the child. So they essentially like control the fate of like individual people and entire countries actually. So they have a lot of power over civilizations and Essentially their task as a fae is to guide destiny. So they're meant to make sure we go on the right path, you know. And they were probably also there making sure that the fae that were in the war were still going on the right path because they yeah. know the future. So so they knew they were going to you know have to shift dimensions. They knew they were going to have to go to a war. So like they're really smart. They're really like they see through everything. So they're just essentially sitting there waiting to guide destiny, you know. and i don't work with them i don't know a lot about them but this is all i know that they guide they they guide destiny and you can see them as angelic if you choose to see them in that form because essentially they are angelic i was sent a picture of what they look like they have like 
wings that look like bird wings or archangel wings, you could call them. They're human sized too, actually. They're not small. Um, some of them are like six to eight feet tall and their wings are like bigger than their body, basically. Um, okay, here we go. But I don't understand something. How much am I in control of my own life if they see already the future? Isn't the future What do you like, mean by that? Well, isn't my future like it wasn't it isn't supposed to be a straight line, it's like more lines and they're, like waves. Oh yeah, yeah. They can see every possibility is what I mean. Like they, they can see every every reality you're in, basically, because we're not just in one reality. So like you're saying, you don't have a straight line, you know, in your life, in your future. So they can see all the lines that you have, all the options that you're going to take, that you won't take. They know which one you are going to take. They know if you are going to choose. You know, like, they're... they're so time, imagine... Anytime you've had a decision, both possibilities exist. Because time yeah. is a web. It's not, like, a certain spot or a certain line that you you go with. It's a web that you align to. So it's like... There, it's basically like the best way to think of it is a web of frequencies, okay? And in these different frequencies are different what you would call timelines. And so, like, yeah. you align to whatever timeline you want. Now, what she was saying is that these beings can assist you on getting to a certain timeline. So they can help guide you to certain timelines or vice versa. But in the reality... Mm -hmm. Those timelines already exist regardless. So now don't worry about it because. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it doesn't no really problem, matter. No. It's no just a. Uh, yeah, just just go I with it. I, just didn't, I didn't explain it right. That was my bad. Um, oh, but I okay. hope you understand what it means. That's now. why. Thank you, Macklin. That's why we are here to ask questions and we and make it right. It's not <laughs> yeah, that's true. Problem, so. It's actually normal. Oh, so, you were right, Fabi. Um, just um, the the um, what? Se Sebi. Yeah. His yes. understanding of time oh. was where he couldn't yeah. understand. But yeah, but yeah, it's just have the understanding of time. So like, time that is not a line. It is just like yeah. when you think of time, think of the universe. Um, mm -hmm. God, I gotta host a quantum physics class to explain Girl, these. I, no, I, I swear, guys, I'm getting on it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Macklin. We're gonna like, I'm excited for that class, really, because you already let's, know. <laughs> let's talk about the phase. Let's let that aside. Yeah, like, is now. we'll focus. We'll focus on the phase now. But to yeah. just to add a little smidge on to what Max said, time I see it as a circle. It's not a straight line, it's a circle. So once you think about it like that, you have to realize that you're in the middle of the circle. Your soul is in the middle of the circle of time. So your soul is not constrained by it. You're just watching it. It's like you're watching like a movie, basically, and you can skip and go back and go forward in the movie. And that's essentially what your soul is doing. So yeah, everything's already happened. Everything will happen. All we're doing right now is experiencing time. That's all we're doing. We're not actually, like, humans say they're controlled by time, but if anything, our souls don't exist within time. So we're really not, because we're not our bodies. We're souls, you know? So, um, there's, yeah, wait, let me read. Because I don't know, I know. All right. Yeah, so Andromedans, yeah, Andromedans, um, they're fail. Yeah, exactly, Zara, thank you um, for asking that question. So they, they are fae like but... You're not exactly connected to the phase, from what I know. Like they're not phase, essentially. You wouldn't you wouldn't call them a fae. They're just yeah, they're star seeds, and they're like a a race. They're a race. They're their own race yeah. of beings. Now, some type of Andromedans do have ties to the elemental realms, which make them fae, but they're not all fae. Yeah. Okay, I see how the timeline or series of events are a circle, but how is time? Mm -hmm. Like, how does it make sense? Oh, girl, time does not make any sense. <laughs> but from what I know, um, I feel like... Okay, wait, let me... 
how does it make so what like what are you essentially asking like what how does what i say make sense or how does like time make sense because it doesn't but to answer your question essentially what like to like make that easier for you to understand is what we're trying to do on earth when we're experiencing time is we're living within the fourth dimension which is the time dimension so we think we're controlled by it but because our souls exist on higher dimensions we are not controlled by it we are just experiencing energy in a physical body meaning that okay you can actually incarnate in a past life so i'm going to use myself as an example i got a past life memory today and i found out that i incarnated in like i was alive in 1996 and i was like a teenager 18 years old like in 1996 and then i died in my 20s and i was born in 2004 and now i'm 19 but it's like that's confusing to understand like how can you be born in the future but it's like you're incarnating in any time period your soul can incarnate in any time period at all you can incarnate in 180 BC in 3050 in 2016 you know at the same like it's like time doesn't really yeah. It's so hard for me to explain. I can't even explain it, guys, but I have like these thoughts in my head and I know what time is, but when I try to explain it because I am ruled by time, my brain cannot process how to say it. Like does that make sense? Like you're ruled by time, so you can't even <laughs> you can't even okay. explain it. Let me explain it this way. Okay, so when we're explaining time, we have to go back to universal understanding. So, understandings of the universe. So, as souls we know that we are the universe's way of exploring itself through like souls and consciousness so in order for us to explore ourselves we must experience ourselves and so these moments where your consciousness is experiencing itself so the universe they are not it think of it as already existing so really just think of it like um exploring parts of a body. Okay? So, let's say your hand is a certain place in time and your leg can be another place in time. Those times are the same thing. So, they are both the universe. But they're on different frequencies. So, let's say they're in different parts of your body. So, you can experience both of those at the same time because they're both the same thing. And this is why time is not um is not linear like it's not beginning and end it's just like imagine like a web like um a net and it the different points of the net there are different frequencies of time that you align to now how this makes sense and how this can happen is because souls have consciousness so you have a soul and you have tons of different consciousnesses that come from that soul So your different consciousnesses can guide you in other lives. They can be with you now. They can incarnate at the same time as you, which is where we get twin flames. And they can incarnate in different frequencies than you, which is giving you the illusion of different times because it's in a different frequency. But really it's the same. It's all happening at the same time. It's all just one thing. Um so you have consciousnesses from your soul. and this is how you collect information and you can keep that information so um your consciousnesses they never die they never go away so this consciousness that you have now will forever be its own consciousness but Why? you're also a part of a bigger soul and so like your this consciousness after you get done with earth you can go on to guide your other lives just like most of your lives are doing right now for you However, it's because they've already experienced what they experienced in a certain time that they were supposed to experience. So, um your consciousness why, um sorry, what? Why does the universe doesn't know about himself? It does oh, know about it. Yeah, we're here to learn like okay. You just don't have the awareness of knowing about yourself, mm-hmm. but no, the no universe sense. already knows about itself. It is universal mm-hmm. consciousness. We are okay, already con- so I want to oh, Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. The 3D just gives the illusion that we're not already connected, but we are. We're already connected. Like everything that is 
like, okay, so we're talking about, let's say this is a Tuesday. I don't actually know what day it is today. So let's say today is a Tuesday and we're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's already happened. We are just aligning to the frequency uh, to tomorrow. So as we go to sleep, as we go wake up, as we make decisions, we're aligning our thoughts, our vibration, our frequency, our physical frequencies to the frequency of which tomorrow is. And which is why we align to it. And this is where people that shift get like that shifting. They're not like really shifting. They're aligning to other frequencies, which is aligning them to different timelines. Yeah. Uh, I. Sorry. What are you going to say? Um, this is way easier to explain with pictures, guys. I'm going to host a class about it. So everyone's yeah. thought. Nah. It's like, that's really. It's, it's a like, whole you, different you, class. You described it without yeah, images. Yeah, no. Because like, when you so talk about hard. days, it's like. Yeah, because, like, it's literally a web, guys. And, like, it doesn't yeah, like, make... And, like, even, like, the dimensional capacities, they're, like, you know, how does all this tie into each other? But it's because they, like, weave in each other. I don't... Again, I need to draw it. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, I know people are, post, like, posting, like, um Loki. I don't know if you guys know about him, but he's, like, the time god. Anyways, I don't want to get into that because that's a whole, like, different... Like, time is a whole different concept to talk about, but the phase, you know, they're not ruled by time. So, you know, Matt can go in depth on that. But what I will say with time is, you know, uh, think of the universe as you being a lesson. Um, the way I see it is the multiverse is like a bunch of people who are basically in class learning about themselves. And essentially, each god, because there's gods of the multiverse and universe, right? So each god of the multiverse was essentially assigned a task to, like, learn about themselves and, like, go to therapy. And essentially, them creating a universe was them learning about themselves through themselves, within themselves, which is why we are here, you know, like, learn about ourselves, because we're the universe, we're that god. All of us are literally just one entity we are source we are god whatever you want to call it and there are other gods out there in their own universe that are learning about themselves too which is why when we say that everything is us and we are everything that's true you know what i mean true uh, and like bye, you know, our quantum perspective like um uh, the whole reason why you guys uh that quantum shift or uh whatever you call it um uh, what do they call it shifting um, quantum jump when you quantum, quantum jump into yeah. like other universal timelines let's say you do it for a night or so really the whole reason you can do that is because that universe is also a part of you because okay so this goes into even further understandings of the universe and what it's created of it in a, a multi-universal perspective so what universe is is it's basically like i think of the universe like a cell in a body so in your body you have other cells now remember another law of physics is as above so below so everything that exists on a smaller scale also exists on a higher scale this is a law of physics so that being said just how we have cells in our body that mirror each other the universe is a cell itself that mirrors other universes that um have their own timeline webs so our universe is its own consciousness that can go through changes just like we do and that being said, they are trying to align to other universes, just how we are trying to align to each other. Like yeah. how 3D beings are trying to become 7D beings and think in a, a unity consciousness, but in still divin, you know. Um, that's what the universe is trying to do with other universes. And same thing our source is trying to do. So our universal source, we do have a universal source. And how we have solar light beings. So solar light mm -hmm. beings are a fraction of that source consciousness. Then you have your universal source consciousness. Well, our universal source consciousness is a part of a multi-dimensional source consciousness. And Guys, that consciousness I universes are trying to align to each other. And so this is one of the main goals of angelic beings. Is to align our universe through our mutual timelines and frequencies to the other universes and so this is why you're you even in this universe you'll hear about other universes and you'll hear about aligning to them or there's um deja vu moments and like you know just different things like that is we're aligning to them is because even our universe is trying to align to other universes so we're yeah. that's we're all really just one big being like 
I... It just keeps expanding. Like, yeah. It's go really ahead. Awesome, but we are deviating from the fairies. Like. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. This time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just I, waiting for. Um, like we like it, but it's not for this time. Yeah, I know, but um, you know, Macqueen was trying her best to help us understand what time is because a lot of people were confused in the chat, and I think that really. Yeah, that really I, I like out. I like that yeah. too. I like that yeah. too. I, I like that too, but we will need like a special day for that. Yeah. No, there's so you, you can mix it up like that. Not knowing things and being confused, so please thank you for waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, I will. I will. I thank you so much, Mac, for explaining that because it's a it's a hard concept. So yeah, another day we can go further in depth. But I will explain more about the um, like fairy portals and what they are. So the picture I just sent that's actually a Seely Fay. Ooh. Um. So. <laughs> so they're connected to nature. Sorry, I'm like reading the chat. But yeah, so about the phase, um, did you want me to specifically talk about something about the phase? Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm letting anyone who has something to say, you know, speak up now because I could go on a whole, like, it's going to be a lot of information and I want to make sure I, you know, get in the points out that you guys actually want to hear about the phase. So if anyone has any, like, topics they want me to talk about, I can. If not, I'm just going to explain what fairy portals really are. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about the Fae portals. So essentially, um, mirrors and another way to connect to the Fae realm would be through portals. So um, in like in other cultures, like Luca said, in his culture, fairy rings are seen as bad, but they're not essentially bad. And um, obviously, I would not recommend entering the Fae realm unless you're meant to, because fairies can make you get lost. They can play tricks on you. And if someone is like disrespectful or greedy, they can they can really be like angry at them entering their realm. So another danger I would say of fairy rings um, is that the fairies can make you, you know, they can make you dance to the point of, exha of ex exhaustion. I can't speak. Um, so you could die. I don't see a lot of cases that people die, but in the past, in the 90s, in the 60s, in the 80s, it used to happen a lot, but it doesn't happen as frequently. Uh, yes, fairies can be physical. Thank you, Andy, for replying. Um, so yes, fairies can be physical. If they, ch yeah, exactly. So, like I said before, fairies can choose to physically manifest in our three D reality. Like right now, if they wanted to, they could, but they choose not to because of the war that happened. So they are scared of humans, and they don't trust a lot of us. So they would rather hide. And they don't even show me their physical presence. And I've talked to them about this before, and they said it's a protection thing. Like, it's not that they don't trust me. They just know that I can see them through my third eye, so I don't need to see them physically. But if you do see a fae physically, don't say you see it. Like, they don't like to be pointed out. They would actually be angry if you did that. So if you see a fae and you say, oh my gosh, it's a fae, they will be really angry at you. I notice they find that really disrespectful. So if you see them, don't say anything. Don't tell your friends. Just look at it and look away. Act like you didn't see anything at all because they probably made a mistake and they were not trying to show themselves or they wanted you to see and only you to see, you know? And I notice that a lot of people who try to work with the phase, they boast about it. And the phase really don't like that. So if you work with the phase, don't boast about it. It's not something cool you should boast about because they're helping you. And that's a personal journey with you and the phase. The phase are spirits that are very sacred to a lot of our ancestors. And I think we need to remember that they are also a form of like angelic being and we should respect them, whether they're dark or they're light. Um, so that's why they don't manifest for me. I would want to, yeah, girl, that, <laughs> that's why, because I'm like that too. I'm the type of person I want to take pictures of every fairy I see. And they are the ones who taught me this actually, that it's disrespectful to like point them out. They were the ones who said, because I actually saw a fae at the park and even me saying this right now to you guys feels weird because I don't like telling people when I see fae. But it was really quick. It was like two seconds. I saw a white, it was like a white, like a fae that was like fully all white. 
and I thought it was like a moth or something because it was so white. I was like, how could something be that white and fluffy? And like one of his wings actually got caught on a tree and I got to touch it. And it was kind of scary because I've never touched a fairy wing before. And I was like, I, it was also after I went through a fae portal. Um, that was because I was connecting to the fae. So if you're choosing to go through a fae portal, you have to have a reason for going through that portal. It's not just, you know, something you do for fun. So for me, I went through the portal and I was coming out of the portal and I saw a fae and then I was like, oh, it's probably just a moth. And then I noticed the wing was like on the tree. And I was like telling my friend, oh my God, I saw a fae. And then as soon as I got home, the fae basically lectured me and scolded me. They were like telling me how, because I have clear audience, so they speak to me through my clear audience. And they were telling me that, you know, I shouldn't have pointed out that I saw a fae. And they were like, we understand that you are not aware that it's rude to do that, but do not do it again. If you see a fae, do not say anything. And it actually happened recently where this time I didn't see the fae with my peripheral vision. It was just like their aura. And I was like, oh my God. And I was about to say it. And I was the only one in the room but the phase, the other phase that were beside me were like, don't say anything because it's disrespectful. It's like, it's almost, I think it makes them feel shameful and they don't like that. So just, you know, if you see a phase, don't point it out. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, like, I know you would be respectful, Zara. So I'm sure they, they I like, I'm reading your energy right now and they like you. So if you feel connected to them, you know, go ahead and do it. The water phase too, I'm seeing that they really like, the water and the fire phase especially, you know, they're really interested in working with you. So if you're connected to like any of those elements or even the earth element, any element at all. Um, also, I wanna say you don't have to be connected to an element to work with the phase. You could connect to things like music or art and they could still help you because there's also music phase. Like there are phase who, you know, they, they sing, they dance and like essentially, that's the majority of what they do is just to spread happiness and joy, music and laughter. Um, yes, okay. So the most common way to enter the fairy realm is either going through a hole at the base of a tree. I'm a musician, so that makes, yeah. So they definitely love, like the music phase, definitely love your music. Like if you're singing or you're dancing, like acoustic, they love acoustic you know, they don't like background noise, so they just want to hear your voice. So if you want to connect to them, Zara, you can sing them a song and they will be so happy. They, if any offering a human gives them even the littlest tiny thing, they appreciate it so much. So if you sing to them, to them, that's probably the biggest offering you could give them, honestly, because voice has a lot of power. And anytime I sing or dance, they always seem really happy. So it doesn't even matter what element they work with. As long as it's a Sealy Fae, if you dance or sing for them, they're going to like be in your space every day <laughs> expecting that because they love happiness and they love positive emotions. Oh yes, yeah. so dance in your room, you know, just feel free to like connect to them. And yes, I sing all the time too. I literally danced and sing and sung today. Like you can sing to them, like they love that. But do know Zara, like if you dance, you can feel exhausted after because you're going to keep dancing and you're not going to realize that you're being controlled. Another thing I have to say is when you're being controlled by a fae, you're not going to know. You're not going to realize till it's too late. And that's how, even until now that I work with them, I don't notice it till it's too late. And by too late, I don't mean like something bad happens. I just mean, it, for example, it's too late to the point where it's like you're tired when you're dancing. Or for me, when I'm cooking, you know, I don't realize I'm being controlled to like add so much seasoning. And I'm like, why is my food so like, why am I adding all this stuff I don't need? Or like, I'm thinking if I just want to make noodles, all of a sudden I go to my kitchen and I've made a full course meal. And I don't know why I did that. And I've made such a mess. And then I'm like stressed out. And that's literally because of phase or like trying to make me do and make the most out of my life. So if they see you're just sitting in your bed doing nothing and you have phase in your room, they're either going to leave because you're not doing anything but if they really want to change your like path or like, you know, push you in the right path, they're going to make you get up and do stuff. And you're going to feel creative. If you're an artist, you're going to be like, why do I have an idea to draw something new? Or like Zara being a mu musician, like if she works with the music phase, she could have random song ideas randomly. Or like she has dreams where she gets like songs or like lyrics that she just, or like you ever like get like lyrics in your head. For me, that happens a lot when the music phase around me. Like I get lyrics in my head that I've never heard or a song tune that I'm like, wait, I like that song, but it's not a song. It doesn't exist, you know? They're just giving me ideas and thoughts to like work through with. Um, but yeah, so I want to go more into the 
into how to enter the fairy realm because this is my favorite part about the fairies like just being in their realm so you can either go through a hole at the base of a tree i'll send you guys pictures of what the trees look like that i found that were portals so this is like these are just the pictures that i took of like trees in my neighborhood that were portals that i went through um so you can yeah you can go under an oak tree oak tree has a lot of power it has a lot of like you know energy so if there's a portal like you see like it looks like a portal you can tell when it's a portal you just know you have this feeling well for me i you know with the clear cognizance i know so maybe not everyone might be tapped into that clear cognizance of just clear knowing but if you really want to you know figure out the song say something okay so if you really want to figure out if it's a portal i would say ask your guides to give you a sign because they're the you know they're the the energy you can rely on the most in terms of spiritual guidance just ask them and if they say stay away from the portal please stay away from the portal because they're trying to protect you because even sometimes with me they don't let me go through certain portals because they know that it's dark energy you know and sometimes i may be ignoring it like i see a portal and just because it's a fey i'm like oh it's a fey and it's like no it doesn't matter even if it's just a fey you could still be affected in ways if you go through a portal if you don't know what you're getting into right um, i have a about fairies yeah uh is it like uh disrespectful when you are camping in the woods and you need to go do your thing be or whatever in the woods and you do it is it disrespectful to them um okay like, <laughs> yeah so they're they're in the said, woods. yeah so i just i just like i thought i was gonna say no but i got a yes in my head so they find it they're just like well only if you're being rude to nature so let's say like you were camping and you threw you like you ate food and you threw the food on the floor and like you littered and then you're peeing near a tree they find that rude but if you're like someone who is very like tidy like they know who you are as a human like you that asked me like you asked me the question they know you so if you're someone if you know that you're being like mean to nature and like you pee in front of a tree they would be pissed off but like if you're really nice to nature and you're someone who's respectful to his nature and you pee in a tree when you're camping as long as like you leave the tree an offering or like you respect it like like you're not doing it in like a bad intentional way they're not going to be offended they understand you have to do what you have to do you have to like you're a human you have to release waste and you know they're not going to be angry at that but for me i would say if you're trying to pee in front of a tree remember that it's not just the faith you have to worry about the tree spirit which is a faith too you know it's something people have to consider because people forget tree spirits are also you know part of that community so you're disrespecting the tree more than you're disrespecting the fae like the like the fairies so what, you know if you're what is a disrespectful way about if you just need to go to pee like you don't do anything bad or anything good you just need to go to pee what will be well, this is the way do you it do was, it or just yeah it would be Not the you. way you do it it would be your intention like by intention i mean how you're yeah the way you do it basically how you're portraying yourself so if you're someone that's being rude to the tree and you you pee and then like you like throw waste at the tree and you litter at the like near the tree then that's rude but if you're just peeing there's nothing wrong with that you know it's just it has to be you have to be conscious about the way you do things in nature is what they're what, trying to teach us what about intention like what about intention like if a in person is like a dog and is that just like to pee in a line straight line everywhere just like a damn dog because because that's how he is but he believes because that is a good thing to like help the nature in some way like there are some good good things in on every being that uh, comes out of them in the nature but yeah is it like still bad is it like still disrespectful if you no. believe he's doing a good thing the way no. he does it's more about it's, your, it's, it's your more intention. about the uh, intention yeah it's your intention it's never about oh i'm a dog or no oh, i'm a cat so no the fays are not they're really smart like the questions you're asking me even them are like 
like really like they're like you know like they're, they're shocked they're asking these questions like that you think they would be disrespectful they're like no humans have gotten us so mixed up they don't know anything about us so to answer your question they would not be mad at you unless you're purposefully doing something to offend them you know and you're the only one who can know that and they do they can see through I'm every human no you're not See, the fact that you ask yourself that question already shows that you care about the faith and you care not to bother them. But, like, I always that, think like I, I always like you. I always used to go with my father in the woods in you know, like with a motorcycle and camping. Like I didn't always like to throw the trash everywhere. I, I, we always had like a, a big trash bag, a back black big trash bag of uh, hand by a tree and we we we'll try to clean it up the place so I sometimes when I when I can when I was little born like 15 years old and more if I saw like other trash uh that was not ours we we like try to clean it up because it just yeah. was a night for the beach and I was thinking about when when I was going into the woods and taking a pee and doing it everywhere was it a bad thing or not no it was not a bad thing um they yeah they understand like we have to make um like they, they understand the circumstance that humans live in they understand that if we're trying to camp in nature there's no washroom they're not going to be mad at that so as long as you're just cautious with the way you act in nature you just make sure that you don't throw things on the ground you make sure that you know if you do pee you thank the tree for letting you dump your waste on it basically or you give it an offering as a way of thanking it or you could just literally What? say it out loud you know be more respectful towards nature just make sure that you're being careful with the way you approach the phase and nature and you're already doing that by asking that question so you don't have to worry about offending them and if you ever feel like you've offended them then just leave them an offering as a way of you know an apology but don't actually say i'm sorry because again they find the words i'm sorry and thank you really disrespectful just because it makes them feel like it's like a it makes them feel belittled basically they feel diminished when we use words like i'm sorry because a lot of humans have used that word and they've not you know kept up their promise it's like okay you're sorry but you're not going to change so they've been hurt before and you know they have essentially trust issues with humans so okay. You know, just be respectful I, and. Like I was sitting here, like I was thinking, like, wait, did I do something bad? Like so many times. <laughs> no, and I, you I, did. I, I just now re realize it. No, you're like human. It, you have to remember you're human. Think about like all the things we've done as a kid. We ate candy and we threw it on the floor. Like think about all the things you've done when you weren't spiritually awake and you didn't care about the environment. Or if you're someone who started to care about the environment at a young age, then like think about all the things your family members have done to litter your friends. Like, you know, it's something that happens a lot. So it's very common and the phase cannot be mad at us for that. Like they understand, except you have bad intentions, then it's a whole different thing. You know, like if you're someone who's purposely doing it to hurt nature, then they don't like you, right? But if you're someone who is asking the question, if you're hurting them, they already know that you have good intentions by asking that question first off. But but what about uh, like where we, we are boys? Like we are, we always like to pick up sticks from the ground and play with them, and we try to hit trees around like not in a very bad way. Like we are playing. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. They love play. They would never see that as bad. As long as you're not take even if you take the stick, as long as you say thank you. Like thank you to nature for taking the stick. They can't be mad at you for that. So if you take anything from nature, just say thank you and give an offering. You don't have to give an offering as long as you say thank you, it's fine. You know. Why does, and but why does thank you work? I I understand why sorry doesn't work, but what why does it why does thank you work? Well, thank like, you is not for like for me. I say it to the to the element to the like the element that I'm working with. So if I'm taking something from the floor, that's the earth element. I'm saying thank you to the earth, not the phase. Like the phase, I've already like me thanking them is by my actions, not my words. I don't say thank you. I, I give them offerings by saying that. But if I want to say thank you physically, is going to be to the tree that I took you know something from if i took a branch from a tree or if i take like a shell from water 
I say thank you to the water spirits or I say thank you to the water element. So it's not essentially the beings that I'm saying thank you to. It's more about I'm saying thank you to earth. Like say it to earth. Like remember that earth is, you know, where we're on and it's its own being essentially. Like its own, I see earth as its own, like Gaia as its own goddess and entity. So you're saying thank you to earth and earth considers, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. It like it's considered like they're the phase of earth too, so. Honestly, what I believe will, it will be very hard for humans is like to get used to it, the idea and the action of actually knowing that something is very alive like next to you and you have to be respectful about it because like they are so, even I am so used about with the idea like how to say it, uh, like not knowing about it it's like a training you need to train yourself consciously about yeah remembering how to be re respectful about it because you, you you sometimes you just forget you just forget about it you may you do something bad you just forget about it and you yeah, remember like and... oh god damn i fucked it up you just remember about it. I, i fucked it up and i know about it but i fucked it up already yeah Anyways, honestly like you can't i know what you mean that's guilt that's called guilt you can't be yourself up about making mistakes you know like it's not always your fault so and you know if you feel like it is your fault then you you, you have to use that self-awareness to change and grow and learn from it but it don't be, be too hard on yourself it will be really difficult for some humans to actually get used to it it will be a lot of fuck ups i, I already see that it'll be a lot of fuck ups yeah for, for everybody so, Yeah, so you just have to like try. just be really be present in every moment. That's the best way, and the best advice I could give to anyone in this class in terms of working with the Fae and trying not to disrespect them or anyone in nature or nature itself is just to be present. Just always be present because if you're present, you're not going to make mistakes. And if you do make mistakes, you can easily correct it. You know, you don't have to wait a whole month to realize that you offended the Fae. Or you don't even have to ask the question because you will know when you do it. So just work on being present in the moment, ground, you know, connect your root chakra, connect to the color red, like ground as much as you can. And that essentially is the first step to really even feel in the Fae. And that would also just help with your intuitive abilities, not just working with the Fae, just as a starseed in general. Being present would also be very difficult for humans because like for centuries, literally centuries, they are maybe i don't know if he's sensitive i'm not sure about it but they are we are, they are very distracted like they yeah. either go into the future with their mind or go back in the past with their emotions it will be very hard like it needs a system otherwise it doesn't work because That's true. they need a system to align themselves if they don't have a system They can't get organized about it. Like, letting it going free, like very free, it's okay, but it will not get everyone in line. It will be like, how to say it? Hmm. Fireworks. Thank you, like, Matthew. some will go good, like, and some will not go good. Because you go everywhere. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense. No, you are, like, I get it. I feel like you have a lot of ideas that you have about the phase and, you know, maybe some misconceptions, too, that you've, like, read in terms of what I'm reading with your energy anyways. So, you know, I can make a second class, another, you know, because I want to do another class about, like, demons and how to work with angels and to see the difference between working with a demon and an angel. Because I know a lot of people are getting tricked by demons, like, you know, lately and the dark the darkness is really trying to get a hold of like the light and the star seeds so i want to help us know that you know light is the way to go so after that class i can host a second class about the phase so you can go more in depth about who they are and you know how to work with them because i think that's what everyone really um wants to do but right now um i just want to finish off And I'm wondering if anyone has any further questions. Like, did do they have like to it? Go before, like, did they what? Did they like it? 
they like the this page? whole that, no this whole thing that happened like now with questions with everybody like how much yeah. like, so i'm so sorry could you repeat your question uh how much did they liked this whole event oh, with fairies and oh, questions you're, you're asking me or you're asking them uh i think Well, from Don't. what I've seen, Macklin said it was nice. Um, Ange said it was nice. She said I should do a part two. Cass said it was nice. Um, I think three people like this. <laughs> you can ask them, but I mean, guys, if you want to express, I feel like for me, if you're asking me, I feel like I didn't really get to go in depth. I feel like I could have talked way more about the phase. I feel like I didn't realize it was going to take this long to speak about. just the difference between the seely and the unseelies but i think also because it's i wanted it to be more of an engaging class you know i wanted to talk to you guys i didn't want it to be me just speaking the whole time so the fact that like i don't know i, I feel like we didn't really get to like discuss as much as i wanted to and like it just took really long but also the presentation not working out was kind of like annoying for me because i really wanted to present but For me, I think I could have done better. Um, I'm just really hard on myself personally, but um I think it's easier I enjoy if you if you have you like a live to... Oh. Like a live on YouTube, I think it's easier for you on YouTube because me maybe will work easier. I'm just thinking. I like Thank you so much Andy. <laughs> I like teaching the class. I really love talking to you guys and like especially hearing all your stories. Like everyone has really interesting experiences with the phase and what not. So just hearing you guys' stories is really what made me want to lead the class. Like I want to engage. I want to speak to everyone, you know, not just teach and I want it to be really engaging. So the live would work way differently than Discord. Um But I think I understand, this, this, um, I understand you. Yeah. Totally. Thank you. Yeah. I, I like um, it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I answered your questions properly. Um You did. You did. Okay. I, I'm you. definitely looking forward to more classes that you could that yeah. you'll do fast and um I wish I could have made it in sooner but I was at oh, an appointment. Okay. That's okay. I, I, I can, we were just We were just talking I hope about I manage it too. Yeah, if you guys literally DM me if you have any questions and you know, I'm someone like I don't know every single thing about the phase. So even when people were asking questions in the live, I was getting answers from the phase like, you know, through my clear audience. So if you have questions that you feel like you want to ask the phase, you're not sure about no or you think the question is weird, like still ask because the phase could be the reason that you want to ask that question. They could be directing you to learn more about them because they want to work with you. Cuz that's how I realized that I was meant to work with them, you know, when I talked to Cash, I was being drawn to ask questions. So, don't be scared to like DM and ask like any question at all. And Miguel, I'm so happy you want to learn more about them because now I'm excited to do another host another. But yeah, it was really nice um talking if anyone has more questions. That'd be great. And also let me know if you want me to send. I can send more AI pictures too of what they look like um in the AI chat just so we can really see accurate descriptions of fae because in the world we're in we don't have accurate descriptions of fae as much as we think majority of them are just made by like masculine energies who are trying to like control us and control the narrative of the world so we have to do our own research and that's why I'm here to help us know the truth so Um yeah don't be scared just let me know if there's anything you are interested in and if there's also points you guys would want me to talk about in the next class let me know too I can bring that up cuz there's a lot of points that I didn't get to talk about in this class that I have but um so I'll be ready to do that next time if you guys are interested Um okay thank you for sending the link Andy I was trying to find that actually All right so if you guys don't have any other questions Um I will probably go soon. I do have a fairy. <laughs> I have a meeting actually with the phase. Um What a, what about so. the the dark fairies that want okay. to go like how can Great. 
that want to oh they're already dark so it's not about them wanting to go dark they've already turned dark so no 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 not, not that like they are oh. already dark but what if yeah. they want to go back to light oh yeah they can they can it's their choice like how they how they can do that well first off they can transmute it's probably going to be really hard i've never actually asked to say that question how can you turn light so it's like changing yeah, so they would have to whole self yeah yeah you would have they would have to essentially go through you know how humans go through an ego death it would be something like that like that's the only other explanation i can give to it it would be something a type of like they would have to cut up their shadow aspect that's make, they would have to heal their shadow self essentially and turn to the light and healing would be the hardest part for them because them healing is healing all the pain and trauma they went through in the fairy war with humans so the only way they can do it is by healing that's how they I do it i think it's so hard like it's so hard like it's me trying for a human to turn up in a car like yeah transformers <laughs> literally no you're right it's literally transformers like i feel like they will have a really hard time because they've been dark for a very long remember time doesn't exist in their realm so they've been dark for ages so if they try to turn light it would hurt them really bad but it would be beneficial because light is for me it's been working out so well but again we have to but understand that Uh, sorry what will make okay. a dark fairy want to go back to the light like they are already okay. there for ages yeah what will so, make them go back nothing except the love energy is the answer i'm getting so only the love energy can make a fairy want to turn light because dark fairies are not able to really tap into that love frequency the way light fairies are and essentially fairies they live through their heart chakra which is the chakra for love essentially So if a phase not able to tap into their heart center, they're essentially in pain their whole ex- existence. So if a phase really wants to turn light, that means they really want to feel love again. Basically, that's that's like the answer out deep. I think like they they remember how it was before the darkness yeah. and they need, they need to go back. Yeah, exactly. The ones like, that are meant to turn back light will turn back light. And I, I, before this universe, once the universe, you know, because everything's already happened, we're just experiencing it. So once the what, universe is like, sorry, what? But what, uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but what if a light fairy wants to see like a, a dark, dark fairy, like it's a friend and wants to help? <laughs> okay, How I'm excited. I'm excited. so happy that you asked that question like keep asking questions so if a dark fae wants to be friends with a light fae that can happen it's it's happening right now as we speak like there are fae out there who their husband is like a dark fae and the wife is like a light fae and then all their friends are mad at them like it's like just like how humans are like oh you can't be with that certain race because they're white or because they're black and their parents get mad at them because they're in a multi relationship it's kind of like that with the fae it's like if a seely goes with an unseely because they love each other um you know for romantic energy and all that the dark energy is probably going to be b- manipulating the light energy but if it is true love which i mean i don't think it would be but if it is then you know the dark fae may want to turn light or it may be that they don't en- they don't get to end up together like i notice a lot with like darkness and light in like greek mythology and all the like research i've done on like gods and ancient beings when a dark being loves a light being it never ends well for both of them basically so i don't think it would end well for any of them i was thinking like if i was a, a light fairy and i had a friend that turned dark how could i make it right so he can go back to the light i was thinking like if i have a, if i had a mirror like bro this is how yeah. you look now you need to go back like <laughs> like he's not aware um, that he's in the dark so you would have to like transmute the energy and that would take a lot of work like i don't think i could see like a fae turning yeah i don't see a fae taking on that duty because it's going to be very hard you ju- you would just have to transmute the energy and basically like help them you would have to be their mentor essentially and like guide them and you would you'd be leaving your role and your duty as like a soul and be helping another soul that would be your I'm mission right. basically yeah Makes sense. it would It wouldn't be easy at all. Like it's like it's a lifelong duty is what I see it as like trying to turn um 
like but what what does a dark fairy do to help nature like they still help nature this makes sense to me plants, like the plants so um okay so for the the high vibrational fairies like the seedy fairies they can help nature right but the dark fairies can also help nature so the way they can help nature is by like most of them are actually ground fairies so they don't have wings like most of the unseedies don't have wings so they connect more to like i said like the earth elements so some of them will make sure like the bugs like like insects like go to a certain place or they make sure like um certain seeds are spread like for example like mushrooms they would make sure like the mushroom pollen like everything is like spread out oh sorry it's not called pollen it's called mushroom spores so the mushroom spores have to spread to create more mushrooms right so they mm-hmm. can help you know like plant the spores like certain certain places so to make sure that you know mushrooms don't go extinct and like we have food to eat they also guard certain portals they can be portal guards like if you have like a if there's like a dark on seely portal that's around they guard the portals they protect it you know they make sure that like the some of them make sure the path between the seely and the seely don't cross so some of them are just protectors of the dark on seely court some of them have a job to like protect nature some of them have a job to protect a certain human so even if they're dark they could still have jobs that are like um beneficial for for everyone including them um I, I feel like i have to have to like research more a bit about the on seaweeds because from what i know it's mostly from experience but i know a lot more about the sea phase so from what i know that's that's the answer i'd give to your question mm. but yeah they're they're really you know if if a sea leech is to like love and in sea leech day it's it's not going to be easy so it's just it's, it's a lot of heartbreak and just like how we see in like romantic movies and stuff like beauty and the beast that's essentially what it would happen like everyone would hate them and you know not hate per se but like everyone would be mad at them like why are you trying to blend the light and the dark it's not supposed to go together and other phases would have their own opinion the dark phase wouldn't like that the dark phase with the light phase and like the light phase would be embarrassed because you know also the light phase will probably turn dark <laughs> i feel like that's what would probably happen because yep. you know like be a lot of temptation Yeah and, and like it's a that, whole spectrum it's a whole yeah. spectrum of the of phase like of there's light and then there's even lighter and and there's darker and there's even darker and like yeah Okay so um I think I'm going to end the class now I do have somewhere to be but I really enjoyed talking to you guys and I'm excited to host the next class. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. No I worries. I hope I, can, um, I hope I can make it to the next class because it's all the way up in Europe here so it's like 1 oh. a.m. It's 1 oh, a.m. No. It's 1 a.m. Like it's not it's night it's dark it's 1 1 a.m. We don't have 1 a.m. and p.m. we have like uh military clock it's one and that's it two and that's it 12 that and that's it so sometimes i get confused i remember some guys here teach me about it like how it's working so sometimes i'm staying very up in the night and i and i fall asleep and i don't get to watch it that's why uh I don't know who has that YouTube channel uh, that I uh, always go there and uh, watch the uh, cash uh, lives like uh, a lot of things. I think you are era 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 I don't pronounce that right but anyways. What it, it helps me a lot. Like oh. it's a YouTube channel with uh, where he, all the lives that uh, King Cash uh, has uh, it's safe like like there. and i i, I was to go there and watch what i missed because i wasn't able to be there 
Okay. Well, I'm really happy you joined the class today. And I hope to see more of you guys there too next time. I didn't think many people would join the class, but a lot of people um, came. So, um, but I hope you guys have a great night. You too. Everybody. Okay, bye, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Nice. Uh, it's 5 p.m. for me. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's 5.59 right now. I'm like, I'm cold and shivering. Okay, well, I'm gonna go now. You guys have a nice night. And I was really happy that you guys came to my class today. Bye, Gabriella. Bye, Zach. Bye, Andy. Bye, Miguel. Bye, Regina.